In the beginning of the movie we see a young and intelligent teenage girl named Lisa McVeigh. She lives with her grandmother Diane and her boyfriend Morris. She works as a part-timer in a donut store and she is very good at her work. At daytime her life seems pretty normal like any other teenage girl. But after returning home her life will become hell. Morris always sexually abuses her, and her grandmother doesn't even care about it, Lisa remains helpless and couldn't do anything about it. One day while getting ready to work Lisa's sister Lori calls her, and she is the only one who truly cares about Lisa in her family. She asks Lisa if she can come over to meet. When Lisa says no Lori asks her to come home, but their mother Betty reminds Lisa that she is there to help Diane and doesn't allow her to come home. Later while she is leaving to work Morris asks her if it is payday. When she says yes he warns her to bring the paycheck straight to home. Later that night while she is leaving the store's owner Ed stops her and hands over the paycheck to Lisa. Lisa thanks him for moving her to the front counter. Ed says that she deserves it cause she has her way of dealing with the costumers even with the cranky ones. Then Lisa gets on the bike. While she is riding home a car keeps following her. When she gets scared the car passes by. Then she sees the same car on her way. Then a man named Joe who is hiding behind another car rushes at Lisa and pulls her away from the bike. He then points his gun at her and takes her into the car. He tells her to shut up or he will kill her. And he keeps forcing himself on her. After he is done Joe covers her eyes with a blindfold, but it still leaves a gap to let her peek through. Joe drives off to his place and he drags Lisa into the house. After getting in he makes her get undressed and pulls her to the bathroom and washes her up. Later he brings Lisa back to the room and ties her up again. She begs him to leave her but Joe throws her on the bed and points gun at her face to warn her. He then asks her name and Lisa answers it is Carol, and when he asks for Lisa's age she replies she is 20. Joe says it is good and tells that he is not a pervert to abuse minors. When Lisa asks why he is doing this to her Joe tells he hates women and calls them all bitches. Later Lisa remembers spending time with her Aunt Carol and Uncle Jim, the only persons who cares about her besides her sister. The next morning Diane goes to the police station and reports to the cops that her granddaughter has been missing and tells she was supposed to work a shift until 2 a.m. this morning and has to be returned by 2.30. Later a cop goes to Betty and asks her questions about Lisa, but she seems like she has the least bit of concern about her daughter. While the officer is leaving Lori goes outside and tells the officer that if Lisa would have ran she doesn't do it without telling her, and says something bad might have happened to her. Later a cop named Lopez visits Lisa's workplace and questions Ed. He asks Ed if he noticed anything odd with her or anything happened to her during the shift. Ed says that she doesn't run away and she is good with everyone and she is like as usual that day too. But he tells she seems kind of sad all of a sudden while leaving. And she thanked him for promoting her, which happened months ago. Later Joe gives Lisa a sandwich and forces her to eat. Then he sees the report about a kidnap of a teenage girl and gets mad about it. He questions Lisa if the news is about her and asks her if she is a teenager. Lisa says that she is 19 and is about to turn 20 in a week. After a while Lisa asks him that she wants to use the toilet and he takes her. Then she asks him to wait outside feeling uncomfortable. While Joe is waiting outside Lisa pulls up her blindfolds and locks the door. Then she thinks for a while and plants her fingerprints on the mirror and on the toilet. Then she takes a look at the sneakers that he left inside. Joe finds that she locked the door and uses another key to open the door and drags her out in anger. Lisa talks with him and calms him up. Later that night while Joe is sleeping Lisa gets up and reaches the phone to make a call. But Joe catches her up and he threatens to kill her. Lisa begs him that she is just trying to call her father, and says that her father is sick and he is only one that she got in this world. She says that she just wants to let him know that she is okay. Later she begs him to let her go home and says that she has to take care of her father, and she assures him that she wouldn't tell a word to anyone. She tricks him and makes him believe her. Joe gets confused and he decides to get rid of her. He ties her up and drags her out of the house into the car and then drives off. Later he stops at a gas station and while he is filling up the car she bites her finger and places her blood on the seat. Later he stops at a place and drags Lisa out of the car and leaves her near a tree. Joe tells her if she go to the cops tell them that he is short black and muscular, and tells not to take the blindfolds off until he leaves or he will shoot her. After she hears the car left she takes the blindfold off and sees a tree in front of her. She then starts to run away from there. Joe sees this through the mirror and he turns back to follow her. She hides behind a car and gets loose of him. Later she gets to home and when Morris tries to beat her she tries to tell her grandmother that she was kidnapped and raped. 
but they don't believe her and Diane tells her to stop lying. She then calls Officer Lopez and says her granddaughter is home and says she is just making up a story on being kidnapped. Officer Lopez tells he has to ask her some questions cause she is a victim of crime and tells that he will pick her up. While she was leaving Diane warns her not to tell the cops about her life here. Later she is taken to the police station and she tells Lopez what happened to her during the time she was kidnapped. When he asks why there is no bruises on her she tells that he threatened to kill her so she didn't fight him to survive. But Lopez doesn't believe her and asks if she is making up a story as her grandmother said. Then he leaves the room and sends two other female detectives into the room to talk with her. Then Detective Russell and her partner asks Lisa questions and she says the same thing, and also tells that he took her to a building cause she counted the steps, and says that he took her to apartment above a office building cause she didn't hear any noises of neighbors or any others during the Sunday, and she also describes the kidnapper's face from the time when she touches it while he is forcing her. But Russell didn't believe her and asks if she really noticed all this in such a panic state. Lisa screams that she is telling the truth and then she clutches herself to a corner. Later we see the chief detective named Dutton who is describing about a serial killer. He was explaining the methods of his killing and the way of choosing his victims and says there is no pattern to it and they don't have any leads until now. After he dismisses the meeting Russell meets a detective named Larry and asks his help in Lisa's case. He goes to Lisa and tries to talk with her. When Lisa doesn't answer him Larry assures her saying that he has a daughter and he will go to any length to protect her and also says he will do the same for her. Then she tells everything he told earlier to Larry and tells a few details she noticed about the car, like the color of the seat covers and how it looks like, and she also says he is white and he is a left-hander while she noticed from the time she peeked through the gap, and also tells about the sneakers she find in the bathroom. He believes her and goes to Russell and tells her to get her details and gives her change of clothes by bagging the present ones for evidence, and he wants to prepare her for a hypnosis. Later he calls her house and asks permission for hypnosis on her to get her out of the shock, but Morris talks pretending her father and tells him to get her home. Then Larry gets to Lisa and tells her what Morris said. Sensing Lisa is scared Larry asks if there is anything wrong happening in her house. Lisa tells him Morris is not her father and tells everything he did to her. Then Morris gets arrested for sexual assault on a minor. Later she packs her things up and Larry takes her to one of his fellow cops house Hannah. Hannah lets Lisa use her daughter's room. Later at the police station Dutton tells about the evidence he found on the victims about the fibers of seat cover of the car. Next day Lisa tells that she left her fingerprints on his bathroom's mirror and toilet, and tells she bit her finger and left the blood mark at the front of seat where he can't see, and also says that she left her hair pin in his house and tells after they left his house he stopped at a gas station around 3.30, then she remembers something and tells she thinks she saw his car before somewhere before the night of kidnap. Later Larry gets to Dutton and compares the details that Lisa has given with their serial killer and says they are the same. When Dutton says their killer wouldn't let his victims live Larry tells that Lisa has survived her whole life from abusive situations and that helped her to escape from him, and he asks to send her clothes to FBI to find evidence. Then Dutton warns him that if their killer and her abductor is same and he knows she is alive she might be in danger. Then he goes to Lisa and tells her he is changing the place. Then he takes her to a safe house and tells her to lay low for a while until they catch the killer. Next day Dutton comes with the results and says that they find red fibers on her clothes and both her abductor and their killer is the same. Then Larry shows the other officers the sketch of Joe they draw through the details Lisa has given. Later Larry takes Lisa to the place where she was abducted to make her recall something from the night of kidnap. She gets in the car and closes her eyes and traces her way back from the night and tries to get to Joe's location. After stopping at the place and she runs out of the car to a tree and recognizes the tree from where she was left by Joe. Then the cop starts to search for the killer. And a cop stops Joe's saying they have a suspect on a robbery and the car's description matches his. When the cop asks if he could check on Joe says no. Then the cop takes a picture of the car saying they will show to the victim and rule him out of the list. Later they show Lisa the pictures of cars that matches Joe's. Lisa takes a look at them and identifies Joe's facial features and confirms it is him. Then the police gets to Joe and arrest him, and a cop finds a blood stain at the front of the seat. Then Larry and his partner gets to his apartment and counts 22 steps, and they get in and retrieves Lisa's fingerprints from the bathroom and also her hairpin too. Then the cops interrogates him and charges him for the murders and rapes he did. Then Larry gets to Lisa and appreciates her for achieving on catching the killer in 12 days which they couldn't do for 6 months. A few days later her aunt Carol and uncle Jim comes to pick up Lisa. 
and they apologizes her saying that they don't know that she has been suffering so much at her grandmother's house, and she was taken with them after she said her goodbyes to Larry, in the next scene she celebrates her 18th birthday happily with her aunt and uncle along with her sister. This movie is based on a true event of a kidnapping of a teenage girl named Lisa McVeigh that happened on November 3, 1984, and she got away from her kidnapper after 26 hours of abuse, and she helped the cops to find the killer. The killer named Bobby Joe Long was charged with 10 murders and over 50 rapes, and on July 1986 he is sentenced to death in Florida's electric chair. After Lisa was taken in by her aunt and uncle she lived with them for few years, and later she pursued her career in law enforcement and had a family that she always dreamed of. Thanks for watching the video, don't forget to like it and subscribe the channel, and also click the bell icon to receive new video notifications.